Good day. In this video, we're going to look at the laws and the basic knowledge that you need to work with exponents. Before we start, please remember that if there's anything that you're unsure about in exponents or thirds, you can send a WhatsApp photo of your problem to this number. Then we'll try and solve your problem and send back an answer to you as soon as possible for free. Let's quickly look at the laws first. The first law says that if you have two powers and their bases are the same, and you multiply them, you write down one of the bases, and you add the exponents, the stuff in the air. So if the bases are the same, and you multiply, you write one of the bases down, and you add the stuff in the air. Example, 3 to the power of 3 times 3 to the power of 4, you are multiplying, the bases are the same, so you write the base down once, and you add the stuff in the air, 3 plus 4 is 7. The second law says, if you have powers that you are dividing into each other, and the bases are the same, you write down the base once, and you minus the stuff in the air, you minus the exponents. So I wrote down the A, and M minus N in the air. Example, I've got 2 to the power of 8, divided by 2 to the power of 4, write down the base once, and you minus the exponents, the answer is then 2 to the power of 4. The third law says that if you have a power in a bracket, base and an exponent, with a more exponent in the air, then you can write down the base and you multiply the exponents with each other. Whether it's n times m or m times n, the answer will still be a to the power of m n. Here we have an example, 3 to the power of 3 to the power of 4. You times the 3 and the 4 in the air, and you get 3 to the power of 12. You don't have to write this step. I don't like to number the following laws, because this is the same as that according to me. Remember, if a power doesn't have an exponent, please remember to write down a little 1 in the air like I did here. You multiply the m with that 1, you get an m. You multiply the m with that 1, you get an m. So this answer is a to the power of m, b to the power of m. Here is an example, and remember, if there is nothing written in the air with a 3, I put a little 1 there. You multiply the 2 with that 1, multiply the 2 with that 4, and the 2 with that 3, you get 9, x to the power of 8, y to the power of 6. We just showed you what you have to do, but you can go straight from here there. According to me, this is very much the same over here. If you have a fraction over here, you actually can put a little 1 in the air and a little 1 in the air like I did here, and then times the m with that 1 and the m with that 1, get a to the m, b to the m. Here we have an example. So we'll times that 3 with a little 1 in the air and the 3 with that 2 in the air. That'll give me... 4 to the power of 3, x to the power of 6, and you can simplify it if you want to. Let's look at a few more rules that you have to have under control before you start working with exponents. If you have a base to the power of 0, the answer is always naught. Example, 3 to the power of 0 is 1. 100 to the power of 0 is 1. Don't underestimate this one. 1 to the power of anything is equal to 1. So that thing in the air can be a a real number is what it says here, but it means it can be a fraction, a negative, a decimal, anything. So 1 to the power of anything is 1. Here's a good example. 1 to the power of 2008. It looks such a big number. Still the answer is just 1. The next rule says that if you have a base with a negative exponent, you can make it 1 over that base with a positive exponent. Here's an example. x to the power of minus 4 can be written as 1 over x to the power of positive 4. I like to write it as x to the power of minus 4 over 1. I make it into a fraction, and then I move it down to get it positive. Here we have a, x to the power of minus n. That becomes a over x to the power of n. Just remember that a has got a little 1 in the air, and that minus n is only part of the x. Example, 3x to the power of minus 4 can be written as 3 over x to the power of 4. Like I said, I would like to write it as over 1 this that they gave me, and then I can move the x to the power of minus 4 down and leave the 3 up there. That gives me this answer. Remember, if I get a big thing with a negative exponent, I can take that whole big thing and put it underneath in a fraction, 1 over, and make it into a positive exponent. Example, 3x in a bracket to the power of minus 4 is actually 1 over bracket 3x to the power of positive 4. I like to write it over 1 and then bring the whole thing down to get it positive. The next rule, if you have a negative power underneath in a fraction, you can bring that up and make it a positive. I like to put the 1 and then get rid of the 1 again. So this is the same as x to the power of positive n. Example, 1 over x to the minus 4, you can bring it up, makes it positive, and that gives you x to the power of 4. 
Next one, if you have a fraction like this, and the bottom here has a negative exponent, you could just bring that x up next to the a, get a x to the power of n, which gives you this answer. Here we got 3 over x to the minus 4. You bring the x to the 4 up, it becomes positive at the top, 3x to the 4. Let's look at a few more variations. Here they give me 1 over a to the power of x minus n. Remember, the x to the minus n, the minus n is only at the x, there's a little 1 at the a. So the a stays down here, and the x to the power of minus n goes up, becomes x to the power of positive n. Example, 1 over 3, x to the minus 4. The minus 4 is only with the x. So we take the x to the power of 4 up and make it a positive. That's the final answer. Next example, they give me 1 over a big negative exponent with a bracket. Take this whole thing up, it becomes ax to the power of positive n. Example, I've got 1 over bracket to the minus 4. Bring the whole bracket up to the positive 4, and then that's my final answer. Times that 4 into each one of the exponents. There is another law that I very seldom use. If you get a fraction with a bracket and a negative exponent, you're allowed to make the exponent positive immediately and flip these two guys over. But people forget that rule. I'd rather do this. I take my minus n and times it in. Take the minus n and times it in. And it looks like this. Then I can see my exponents are negative and I just flip them over and bring this guy up and down to make it positive. Here we have an example. We've got 3 over 4 to the minus 2. First with what they said, you can make that a positive 2 and flip these two guys over and then get the answer. Or you can times the minus 2 into that exponent and the minus 2 in, get this answer. Because my exponents are now negative, I just turn, bring this guy up to getting positive and this guy down. And this is my final answer. Pretty much the same as what we did now. If you have an a to the minus m, b to the minus n, bring this guy down to getting positive, bring this guy up to getting positive, then that's your final answer. Here is an example, x to the minus 3, y to the minus 4, bring this guy down, make the exponent positive, take this guy up, make the exponent positive. Please look at the video, grade 9, negative exponents, that I explain this more fully, let's look. We have here quite a few exponents, we've got 3 to the power of 0, 3 to the power of 1, 3 to the power of 2, 3 to the power of 3, 3 to the power of minus 1, 3 to the power of minus 2, and 3 to the power of minus 3. I assume you know that 3 to the power of 0 is 1, 3 to the power of 1 is 3, 3 to the power of 2 is 3 times 3, which is 9, and 3 to the power of 3 is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. If you know what the answer of 3 to the power of minus 1, 3 to the power of minus 2, and 3 to the power of minus 3 is, you can stop looking at the video now. Just to get my brain around this, I take the 3 to the power of minus 1, and I write it over 1 as a fraction, then it's still the same. Then I take the 3 to the power of minus 1 down to get it positive. So that is then a third. So 3 to the minus 1 is a third. Now 3 to the power of minus 2. I first write it as a fraction over 1. Then I move the negative exponent down. It becomes 1 over 3 to the power of 2 to make it positive. And that gives me 1 over 9. So 3 to the minus 2 is 1 over 9. Similarly, 3 to the minus 3, I write it as a fraction over 1. Make it positive to bring it down. And then it gives me 1 over 27. I want you to see that a negative exponent does not make the answer negative. I also want you to see 3 to the power of minus 1 and 3 to the power of 1 have got very much the same answer. This is 3 and this is a third. 3 to the minus 2 and 3 to the power of 2 is also friends. This answer is 9 and this answer is 1 over 9. So is 3 to the power of minus 3 and 3 to the power of 3 friends. This one's answer is 27 and this one's answer is 1 over 27. So negative exponents changes into fractions. Please indicate whether you liked or disliked the video and subscribe to the channel.